Rough Beginnings Rehab shows you part two of a puppy training series. This is basically what an average day with a puppy looks like. Make sure you check out the links below to learn everything you need to know about puppy training. You get up in the morning, you use the bathroom, and then you get your, your leash and your bag of food and you go to let the puppy out. She's ready to come out. Of course, she has been through the crate training. So see her little paw goes up and I just move, I just move away. If I touch it again, nope. Her little paw goes up, I just move away. She learns that if I'm about to let her out and she tries to scratch, I move my hand away. I don't mind the kissing, no. But I do mind the pawing. So because this is uh, morning, I'm still going to really, even though she's been through the process, she knows how to wait. Um, it's hardest, you know, in the morning. So I'm just going to take my time. Nope. So she didn't bolt, but she did her cute little paw. Good down. Good default down. Good. Zoe, come. Oh, that was a little premature, but not bad. Okay, so here is where you have a couple choices. Zoe can hold her, her pee, um, and normally I would immediately be putting her in a sit, but I just don't have the extra hands. Uh, Zoe can hold her pee and walk to the door. I know, hang on. By the way, I'll explain the tool that I'm using on her um, later. All right, so I know that she can walk to the door and she can hold it at this point. If your pup, she's 12 weeks, if you're, or 11, um, she, if your puppy can't, even at, you know, that age, sometimes age doesn't matter. If they haven't been crate trained, haven't been taught to hold it, then that they may not be able to. You can absolutely, and this is just in the morning or if you've been gone a very long time, you can absolutely, hang on, wait, wait, little one. <laughs> you can absolutely uh, pick the puppy up and take them outside just that one time, but make sure the rest of the time, come on pup, make sure the rest of the time that you are definitely um, having them sit and wait at the door. Or if we're really young, like if it's, if it's literally eight weeks old, sit, good. They don't necessarily have to wait at the door, but just get a sit and just use their kibble, their morning kibble. And she has learned to wait at the door. She's very curious this morning. Usually she's pretty focused on just getting outside. Sit, good. So because she is a little, little older, she's not, you know, an eight week old puppy, I can really take my time, make sure she's not bolting. And how we practiced this was just sitting and me blocking and using leash pressure. See how she saw my foot and backed off. We've been working on spatial pressure. Let me make sure no doggies are outside. So I don't mind that she pops up, she's a baby. I just don't want her to bolt out the door. Sit. Good. Okay, let's go. Good job. Okay, hang on. So I am going to do this as quickly as possible. I really don't want to keep you all all day. Let's go. So same thing here. Sit. Good. Good job. And remember when you're, you know, we, she's been practicing this for about five days now. It's not going to be perfect. Um, from the beginning. Zoe, sit. Good. No. Nope. Oh, you little stinker. Come in. Zoe, Zoe, come. Yeah, good job. So you notice how she doesn't get in like big, big trouble? I mean, she's still learning, right? Zoe. Zoe. <laughs> God. Oh, dear. It's a little hard. A um, little harder than usual. Uh, sit. Holding the phone. Okay, let's just go. There we go. <laughs> I'll take it. And you got to remember, sometimes, you know, when the puppies are so excited in the morning, you got to take what you can get. <gasps> go potty. Go potty. Good. So I always say go potty when I lead them into the grass. And then I generally um, don't say it again until they actually do the deed. And then I just say, good, go potty. Good, go potty. Good job. Good, go potty. You know, <laughs> and I repeat it while they're actually pottying. So I'm applying the word to the action. Now she gets this amount of space. I'm not going to let her walk around a lot. 
I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna be boring right because I don't want her to be focused on me I'm gonna be super boring good go potty good girl go potty good girl so we could go potty. Good job. Um, so I don't use treats to um, to train for, for pottying. That's a personal choice. Lots of people have used treats very successfully, but I've just found it keeps the dogs looking at me and re- waiting for their food. And sometimes they won't even finish pottying, um, especially if they accidentally like hear the crinkle of food or something. So um, I don't think she hasn't been pooping in the mornings. It's just not been her thing probably because I'm spreading her food out during the day doing so much training that just I don't know in the mornings it's just not been happening um and a lot of times she won't even poop outside she still gets too overwhelmed with smells and I'd be out here all day so we're still working on that however what I'll do is if she was the type that I knew would definitely poop in the morning no more than five to ten minutes of just walking in a circle when she gets stuck on a smell, I just keep her moving. Let's go. I'm really boring. Um, if she starts to pick stuff up off the ground, I just move her along. Like, let's go. Good. The lo- the leash stays loose. Um, see, there's a human as a distraction. Let's go, Zoe. Good job. Good. And I don't get too excited. I want to keep uh, fairly mellow. There's a bicycle. Come on, pup. Um, and I just stay in the same in the same space, right? I take her to the same spot all the time, every day. So, um, so that's how this works. And then we go back inside, and we do the same thing. We wait at the doors. I don't make her like I'm not as strict going in, but I still make her at least sit. And here's the thing: if she doesn't pee, pooping, I'm not as concerned about. But definitely pee. I do not want pee <laughs> on the floor. If she doesn't pee, she goes. Let's go. Good. Lots of distractions is today. Um, so if she doesn't pee, she goes back in her crate for 15 minutes, maybe. And then we do this whole process again um, until she pees. If she, you know, five, 10 minutes, if she doesn't pee, she goes back in her crate. There is no free time in her playpen or um, obviously out of her playpen until she pees. That's so imperative. And then if you have to go to work, then, you know, I don't know what you're doing, but if you have a crate, I would just put, I would just put uh, puppy beds in your crate. So she doesn't get, so the dog doesn't get used to going on, um, on a bed or even on that hard plastic, you know, feeling that plastic un- underneath their paws when they potty, bad, bad, bad. So you just, you, you would just, at the end of the day, if you just can't, can't get it to work, um, that's what you would do. And if they really needed exercise and they still wouldn't potty and you had to go to work, I would just work them outside in the backyard or out here. I would just get a little bit of a longer leash and work on come, sit, break, come, sit, break, which is actually what we're going to go inside and do right now. I don't think she's got anything left in her. Okay, so even though she... Even though she didn't uh, poop, she did pee, so now we can do some work inside. Um, So just to be really clear, super clear, trying to help you guys out as much as I can, I haven't even given her water yet because if I work with her for about 15 minutes and she's had water, um, she could pee on the floor, right? So, I mean, that might sound harsh to some of you, but unless they're panting and dying after, you know, being crated all night, then it's probably too hot in their crate or they're stressed. Um... And you don't have to worry about it. She's clearly fine. And look, she's ready to work. (laughs) So we're just going to work on... Actually, I'm not going to do the place yet. Not yet, girl. We're just going to do some come sit break. And that's generally just to get some initial energy out of them. Sit. Good. Better move that ball, too. She loves to play. Break. So I throw a few on the ground. Wait till she eats them. (gasps) Puppy, come. Is that we come? Sorry. <laughs> Sit. Good. Sometimes when I can't remember their names right away, I'll say puppy. Break. Good. So we come. Ugh. So she's gotten in a bad habit. Sit. Good. She'll actually pick them all up in her mouth and then run to me and drop them and try to chew them along the way. Bad habit. Um, so maybe I just won't put down as many this time. Maybe I'll just put down two. Because the point is to put down several so they'll eat it. And then it gives you more room to run away. But she's, she's not playing by the rules. Sit. <laughs> Break. I'll just give her two. Zoe, come. Yeah. Sit. You can absolutely play this in the yard. Good. Break. So this is come, sit, break. Zoe, come. Sit. Good. 
Break. Zoe, come. Now it's important to do this in different rooms that are weird. She did it again. She picked them all up in her mouth. Zoe, come. Yeah. Sit. See different surfaces under her feet. Break. You want to get them used to that, being in different rooms, small rooms. What you doing, girl? I know you didn't eat those. Sit. Good. Break. Zoe, come. Yeah. Sit. Good. Break. So do this in all rooms of the house, outside, on different surfaces um, for 10, 15 minutes, depending on how much energy your pup has. She has a lot. We would normally do this for a good 10 minutes because she has a lot of energy. Um, for a Bichon, I mean, it's unbelievable. All right. So then... What I would do after the come sit break, she, the dogs can get really riled up from that, even though it is, it does have some structure to it. Before I leave, for, so right now I could do a couple things. I could put her in her playpen and notice it's covered with puppy pads pretty much all, all, because I don't want her to get in the habit of going on something other than pads when she's training. Oh, she got water. Oh, you sneaky thing. Oh, you're sneaky. <laughs> So I could do a couple things. I could put her in there while I get ready, um, finish my coffee, that kind of thing. Um, or I could go ahead and work with her a bit more. It's really just it's really just up to you guys and what your morning routine is. But you definitely want to give them water, um, put them in a confined space for a little bit, then give them another opportunity to go outside if they didn't pee on the puppy pads before you leave for work. That is my personal preference. So probably actually right now, I would, after 10 to 15 minutes of that, I would put her in here, go get ready, finish my coffee. Then I would, um, if she, and I would let her have water, right? Let her have water, put her in there, finish my day. If she doesn't pee in here, I would then take her outside. Yes, I would, I would take you outside. If she still doesn't pee, I would probably just suck it up, put a few puppy pads around here, work with her on nice, calming, um, a nice calming command. Well, I'm going to use it in a calmer way, and I'll show you what I mean. Sit. Good. Place. Down. Now, she does already know these commands, so obviously, I mean, not super well, but she knows them. Break. Place. Down. Um, so if your puppy doesn't know them, I mean, obviously, that's what you're doing. You would spend 10 to 15 minutes working their brain and teaching them. So now that she already knows them, we're gonna pattern it a couple, by patterning I mean repeating. Break, place, down. Okay, so we might do that 10 times. Uh, break, place, down, or Zoe come, place, down, one or the other. Um, but, but for the sake of time, place, down. And, and oh, uh, for the sake of time, I'm gonna move on to the next step. However, I will say, when I first taught this, I taught it on a flat mat because the, the ridge can do one of two things, make the puppy too excited and make it a game, which she actually absolutely did. Um, I even have a video of that on my Facebook um, back in uh, uh, early, early April, late March. But, um, but, but anyway, I taught, you teach on, on something flat is better, um, kind of like those, even though they're layered. Um, something flat like that is, is better. Just because uh, these, this can actually create an inhibition for the puppy. They, they get tired quickly of, of having to go over it. Makes it harder for them to understand. Or with her, she made it into a game and frantically went back and forth, back and forth. And that was even after she learned it. She just thought it was lots of fun. Um, but anyway, once you teach them to just stay in duration, the beds are great because they're more comfortable. Down. Good. Oh, you little brat. You popped right up. Down. Good. So now we're working on staying. I'm actually going to drop this. I don't want to accidentally pull it. I am going to step on it though. Puppies tend to run off. Good. So now we're working on um, just practicing staying for long periods of time. Good. So, I mean, honestly, I could have this in a corner of the bathroom. Good. Like for me, personally, if I didn't have the time to do this in the morning, I would make time. Watch what I mean. Break, let's go. Okay, I should probably move the, the clothes and the towels, right? That probably should not be on. 
Facebook or wherever this is going to be. Come here. I know that's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird. Okay, so so hang on. So I could do one of two things. She's like a little weirded out. I could bring that bed in here or place, sit down. All right. So I'm going to step on this. I'm going to reward her a few times. Good. Just for staying in place. Good. Now I'm going to take her little bag of goodies. I'm going to put right there on the counter. Good. And I'm going to close the door so she can't escape. Good. So what I, what I would seriously do is I would put, yes, that's my big giant makeup thing. I would seriously put that here or here and sit here and do a little of this. Good. Sort of good. You popped up, but that's all right. Down. All right. Lean into the mirror. Do something. Do something. Good. I mean, I am not kidding. Like, you got to make it work, people. Sit here. I put something on. Blush, blush, blush. Good. Okay, I know that this doesn't apply to the men. All right, so you get you get my point. Like, you really want to make this work, you make it work, right? You want a calm puppy, because this is not a calm puppy. Um, you want to create a calm puppy, this is how you do it. So I open the door. Break, let's go. Let's go, Zoe. You did so good. That was so weird, right? Because I hadn't done that before. Oh, yeah, that was so weird. Something new. Or anyway, you stay out here. You take 10, 15 minutes. You, you um, switch between patterning back and forth, back and forth and making them wait, right? So um, so this is our morning. And right before I crate her for a few hours, before a friend comes, a dog walker, or I come on my lunch to let her out, because you should not leave a puppy all day long if you can help it, because you'll come home to absolute madness. Um, we'll do the same thing with the crate. Let's go, and we'll take just a few minutes to do that. No, 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 not in there. We're going back in here, yeah. We're going back in here. All right. Yeah. She's like, but, but come on. She's like, I, I don't want to go in there. I was just in there a few minutes ago. So I take the rest of her kibble and I say crate. Good. It's a little dark. I'll try to lighten this up for you guys. So if it looks weird when I lighten it up, it's my bad. Oh, good. Down. Good. Break. Good. Or come. You can say, you can say come too. Crate. All the way in, little one. There you go. Down. Good. Down. <laughs> Silly girl. Down. Good. Zoe, come. Yay. Sit. So notice I'm not really doing a lot of petting. There's not really a lot of riled up play. It's all really structured. And that's because I'm leaving for a few hours, right? The last thing I want to do is get her all riled up. So the last time that, that we would do this, I would take the leash off. Okay, so this is my last time sit. So say I've done this 10 times, right? So we crate, down, good. Sorry, it's going out of focus. There we go. Good. Now I'm going to reward her a few times for staying in her crate. Good. Down. Good. And again, if your dog hasn't learned this yet, you just practice the patterning. And I'm using her kibble, not her, um, not treats. But in the beginning, you might need to use treats. It depends on the dog. Luckily, she's really food-driven. Crate. Down. Good. So I would give her a few. And then I would shut the door. Now, if I'm leaving her for more than a couple of hours, or especially if she didn't pee, I would probably um, do like just a blanket in the front and then probably a pee pad in the back. If, um, if, I'm, re if I'm home all day and really working on crate training, then I would have a divider. And they, they, these things come with dividers. Okay, that's actually for the big crate right here with the big guy. But uh, they, they should come with dividers. And I would actually only give her enough space to stand up, turn around, stretch you know, lay down comfortably and that's it. If I was home all day, because I would be letting her out in, um, if I wasn't working with her, I would be letting her out in two hour intervals, as long, unless she's cocked out, then I'm not gonna wake her up. But um, 
but letting her out in two hour intervals to remind her to help her understand that she's gonna get the option of going outside. So it's, it's to create that habit, right? It's to create a consistency. So they learn to hold it in the crate and that they'll get, that they will definitely get a chance to go potty outside. That's the whole point. But if I'm having to leave, you know, for more than a couple hours and this puppy's eight, nine, ten weeks old, um, then I'm definitely going to uh, probably maybe do a blanket and, and then just put puppy, puppy pads in the crate. There's nothing wrong with that for the first few weeks. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's what a morning looks like with a puppy. It's a handful, right? Get ready. Okay, so let's talk. Oh, hello. Dusty, lay down. Lay down, bud. All right, so let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about these tools that I'm using. So, um, oh, hi, bud. You wanting some attention? Yeah, are you wanting some attention? Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so someone wants to play. Um, give her a ball. Zoe, you want the ball? Why don't you go play? Um, okay, so, so here's, here's the thing. Um, every dog is different, right? So, some larger breed dogs, I will start prong collar training with at 12 weeks. I know how to be incredibly gentle and I have good handling skills. I should. Um, some people aren't ready for that, right? First dog, uh, it's too much for them because you do need to have good handling skills if you decide to use a prong on such a young dog. But here's the thing. Here's the thing with Zoe, even though she was only 11, 12 weeks old, um, her history was all kind of like just drive, drive, drive. She's a very drivey dog, and that was reinforced by people constantly, you know, feeding into her adorableness, as you can tell. I mean, how could you not? But, but you really do. You really have to not. Um, or, um, <laughs> or her just kind of running amok with, with the other dog in the home and just, just really <sighs> solidifying, not listening to anybody when she's in this wild mode which was actually more difficult than I anticipated uh, to train out of her. I mean, just to be completely honest, it, it really was. So usually on dogs under under 10 to 12 weeks, if they're smaller breeds like her, she's a Bichon, um, I'll, just do, I'll just do slip leash training. And if they're like six, seven, even though you shouldn't have a dog that's six weeks old, um, sometimes, you know, it happens. Uh, you know, just a harness, anything really, eight weeks, sometimes nine, 10 weeks. Again, if it's a really small dog, absolutely do harness. Um, so anyway, did the slip leash, nothing. I mean, not a thing. It, it was so difficult. Um, I did use the slip leash to teach her pressure, like how to give in to pressure and how to, you know, what pressure means and stuff like that. It was a great tool for that. But once we go outside, Zoe, what are you doing? I need to be able to see you. Hello. Good girl. Yes, yeah, sit. You got to be ready, people. Sit. Good, good job. She came right to me when I called her. Break. Um, so anyway, when, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, okay, so so the slip leash was great for just teaching pressure. Like, so I teach all the basics with just food luring, right? For the first couple of days. Yeah, food luring, like that. <laughs> good girl. Um, so then when, when they have it down, I pair it with pressure. So they learn how to give in to pressure, which helps you on the walks. Well, it didn't help me with her, I'll tell you that. Um, when she still saw a human or a dog, she was a maniac. And when I say maniac, no offense to your mama who's watching. Maniac. <laughs> you were. You were such a maniac. So anyway, um, when that happens, and I don't think that they're ready for prong, like an actual prong collar yet, um, I use what I call puppy prongs. I actually use them pretty often. Um, they're not called puppy prongs. You can't type in puppy prong and it pop up. At least I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure I didn't invent the term, but, um, but that's what I call them. Okay, so you can't see that very well. So this is just a plastic prong, right? All right, so it slips over their head, so it's not like super, super snug. And I guess this does look probably pretty scary on camera, but I swear it's not. Like she barely even notices it half the time still. Um, but it's, it's just rounded, it's just rounded tips. And then what happens is uh, like a normal prong, it distributes even pressure all the way around the neck. So it doesn't put any direct flat pressure on the trachea, like a lot of harnesses, not all of them, but a lot of harnesses and any flat leash collar or slip leash do. Now, don't get me wrong, like, because this is like bigger and, and more flat and blunt, I mean, sometimes it will accidentally 
um, put pressure right on the front, but it's not very common. You still like want to learn what you're doing. You don't just put one of these on a dog and use it. You know, you want to watch how to videos um, and stuff like that. But what happens is it just makes it uncomfortable for her to literally throw herself at people. <laughs> and then if she's in the harness or in a slip leash, she like flops around like she's fallen and she doesn't even care. She gets up and does it again, right? Well, we have to stop that. And we spent days doing recalls off of people, which I probably have in another video. And it really just didn't do any good. I mean, I was able to call her off, but she still killed herself trying to get at people. And those are people who didn't even give her eye contact. So she's been one feisty gal. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Um, so this really helps me out. So uh, what I want you guys to do is watch part two of this video to actually see how I use this in her case. Oh, and how you find this is, um, I think you just can go to Amazon and type in training collar, and I think this pops up. This is a small, um, I would actually never use the large because I would never use this on a large dog. I would just use a normal prong on a large dog. Um, and honestly, in a month, oh, look at her. She's just so feisty. Um, honestly, in a month, she could probably uh, use a regular prong. We'll see how she's doing um, with this if she's already started to just completely blow this off. And I'm telling you, this Bichon puppy, <laughs> she has been, I don't even know, like her energy and just her drive to tune out the world to get whatever it is she wants. She is one feisty little gal. So you, you got to remember when you get puppies, you know, maybe you're one of the lucky ones to get the nice, calm, yeah, puppy. <laughs> and maybe you're not. So just, just, what have you got? What have you got? So just keep that in mind. You never know. I mean, she's a peach. I absolutely adore her. But, uh, but she's, she's been a challenge. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. This is part two of a puppy training series um, on YouTube in my playlist section. The link is also going to be down below. It's everything you need to know about puppy training, about having a brand new puppy. And if you like what you saw, don't forget to subscribe.